Dan Dick out here for Gonzaga Nation SI. Today is the first of many WCC weekly reviews and previews, weekly updates, uh, you may want to call it, as we kick off the first season or the first week of college basketball season. And what a week it was for the WCC, a combined 22 and 4 for all teams uh, in the WCC. We'll start right off with. Uh, Maybe the team of the week in the country, even St. Mary's. Uh, they were three and zero. Granted, they were all three home games, but in years past, if you remember, uh, St. Mary's would schedule quite easily, and it kind of caught up to them one year where they should have been in the NCAA tournament, uh, but they didn't have enough good non-conference quality wins to qualify. And they have really changed their scheduling premise since then. Um, they're going to be actually playing Baylor, uh, I believe, really soon. They play a tough. They're going to play a tougher schedule this year. Maybe, sorry, it's Houston that they play. They're going to be playing a tougher schedule maybe than they ever have. But that even goes for their non-conference home games. They were three and zero this past week against three really good mid-major teams: Oral Roberts, Vermont, and North Texas. They beat all of them. Oral Roberts is probably the most known of that group because of their run in the NCAA tournament a couple years back. Max A. Smith is still there, but a uh, great week uh, for the Gales. Aiden Mahoney, good freshman guard, kicked off his career with a 25-point night in the opener. Um, so that's one team that had a great first week. Um, University of Portland, they also went 3-0, and although one of their games was against the NAI uh, school from the Portland area, Lewis and Clark, but they beat Florida A&M. And they beat crosstown rival Portland State, the Vikings. They kind of really handled their uh, unique pressure and style that they play defensively. So a uh, good start for Shante Leggins and the Pilots. San Diego under Steve Lavin uh, started with an opening night game against uh, non-Division One Sonoma State. Um, but they're 3-0. and um, You know, they did beat a really good Florida Gulf Coast team who made a West Coast trip. Florida Gulf Coast now knocked off USC uh, in the Pac-12, who should finish top four, top five in the in the Pac-12. They beat the Trojans and go down to San Diego, and the San Diego Toreros beat Florida Gulf Coast. So that's a really good win there before they beat NJIT by 10. Uh, Siku Suha Jawara is off to a nice start. <laughs> excuse me, averaging nearly 20 points uh, a game. They've got four guys averaging in double figures. So you like what's going on down in San Diego right now under Steve Lavin. Um, Texas, or excuse me, San Francisco, as you might expect, uh, continuing the trend of, of being a, a top-tier team. Started off 3-0, and beat Texas Southern, Cal Poly, and UC Merced. They've gotten production from a number of different guys so far. Tyrell Roberts has led them in scoring uh, Khalil Shabazz has led them twice, um, and he's gotten um, uh, better progressively in each of the three games. Marcus Williams, a good point guard transfer um, from Texas A&M, as well as Wyoming, hasn't really um, got things going yet, but he is going to be really good for, for the Dons this year. Uh, then we move to the teams that are 2-0. Um you look at Santa Clara, they might have the player of the week. Uh, well, it'll be interesting to see when when that is voted on and when that is released. But Brandon Podzminski, uh, two 30-point games for the Broncos, first against Eastern Washington when they won 84-72. He had 30 points, and then he backed it up with a 34-point performance where he went 6 of 8 from 3 when the Santa Clara Broncos knocked off Georgia Southern. So great start for her Sendex ball club to be 2-0 and at this point in time. And then the other 2-0 and team, you guessed it, Gonzaga. Don't need to go too in-depth here, um, you know, with, with what we saw, what you saw, uh, because Adam Morrison and I will be recapping uh, those two games, in particular recapping the aircraft carrier game, because, you know, they opened the season with a nice win against North Florida where a 26-0 run showed you the spurtability of this team. Uh, and then they go to San Diego, play on an aircraft carrier, which is an experience of a lifetime for anybody who has a chance to do that. They beat Michigan State in a great game where they didn't look great at times, but they got it done. So they are 2-0. and LMU, non-Division one at 2-1 uh, with a non-Division one win over Life Pacific 99-49. They lost to UC Riverside by two where they led the entire game. Um, but lost on a last-second shot. Then they come back, bounce back, 
and beat UC Davis. Cam Shelton has been really good for LMU, uh, 23 points and 24 points respectively in their last two games. Um, so LMU, um, you know, could easily be in that three and O category as well. Next up, we move to Pepperdine. Uh, they are at two and one, uh, oddly enough, they could be three and O as well. They beat rice, uh, by nearly 40 Maxwell Lewis has 29 points, 12 of 15 from the field. Uh, then they lost a tight game against Cal state Fullerton by three on the road. Uh, they lost by three. They were in the game, the majority of the game, and then some late free throws went Cal state Fullerton's way. So they weren't able to close that out. Alabama state, then visited the Pepperdine Waves in Malibu. The Waves came away with a nearly a 30-point win. Uh, but Maxwell Lewis has been great. Mike Mitchell Jr., his Houston Maletta has been good. And then Javon Porter, the freshman, uh, has shown some great flashes early. Move to the next tier of teams that have only played two games. They both started off one and one would be BYU and Pacific. BYU uh, squeaked out a win at home against Idaho State. Um, Fusini Traore had 15 points. There were some big plays down the stretch for BYU to pull that game out, um, which was a bit of a surprise because uh, Idaho State is predicted to finish last or second to last in the big sky, depending on which poll you're looking at. Um, but then they go on the road and um, they put up a valiant effort against San Diego State, who's ranked in the top 25. When this poll comes out, they will probably be ranked in the top 20. They are a good team, but Spencer Johnson led the Cougars with 17 points in that road loss. But you like the the fact that obviously they competed and they played much better against better opponent. And then you look at P Pacific also at one and one, they go on the road to start. They gave Stanford a tough game. They only lost by 10 on the road in Palo Alto, come home and beat North Dakota state. Tyler Beard has 21 points. So uh, all in all a good opening week for the WCC uh, where they went 22 and four, um, lots of games on the slate this week. Uh, some really good games, games that caught my eye. The two Gonzaga games, obviously, you're going to catch everybody's eye nationally as well because they go to Texas, play, have a, the return game um, with the Longhorns because Texas played at the kennel a season ago. Texas is going to be really good, fired up to play. Drew Timmy had 37 in that game last year. Um, this is a homecoming of sorts because it's back in the, his home state of Texas. And then they host Kentucky at the Spokane Arena in what's being dubbed a neutral site game um, next Sunday. And then the other couple games that caught my eye uh, across the league this week, Santa Clara at Utah State. Utah State may be not as good as they've been in years past, but that is a, a great atmosphere. Um, it's a difficult place to play, so that should be a good game. USF at Fresno State, Fresno State in the Mountain West, trying to find their way after losing Orlando Robinson to the NBA draft a season ago. Um, but that would be a great road win for the Dons. And then the other one that caught my eye, LMU plays Georgetown in the Bahamas in a little uh, multi-team event. So appreciate you listening to the WCC Weekly uh, here on Gonzaga Nation SI. Check out all our podcasts, our videos, our shows, uh, as well as our articles up on the website. We're, we're trying to cover Gonzaga and the WCC in many ways. So take a listen. Let us know what you think. Have yourself a great week.